I'm Eric Forrester. Hi, I'm Rich Minmer. And hi, I'm John Mathis. We work with Calgon Carbon, and we're here today to address some questions that we had from our first video. One of the first questions we got is, what exactly is the difference between a point of entry treatment system and a point of use treatment filter? So we put together a sketch to illustrate that difference. As the name might suggest, a point of entry treatment system treats water that's coming from either your local municipality or your own private well as it enters your home before it actually gets into your pipes. In contrast, a point of use filter is treating water at the point that is actually being used, including in your fridge, in a water pitcher, and under your sink. Now, the design for each of these configurations is going to vary, uh, so we're going to talk about just under sink filters today. So to introduce that first topic, reverse osmosis, is gonna be Dr. Rich Minna. Rich? Thanks, Eric. Now, an RO system relies on a polymeric membrane, often wound into a spiral like you see in this example here. The device will use pressure to force water through microscopic holes in that membrane, thereby leaving contaminants behind. That list of contaminants consists of organic chemicals, including PFAS compounds, which have been in the news so much lately. Also, it will remove mineral compounds, typically a good thing when you consider removing things like lead, but you should keep in mind it can also remove minerals you may prefer to have in your water, like calcium and magnesium. Coincidentally, all RO systems will include a carbon block pre-filter in them, like you see in this diagram here of a typical system. Notice we start with sediment filtration, then that carbon block pre-filter, finally your RO membrane, and then optionally you can have carbon post-filtration and remineralization. Now in contrast to simpler carbon block type filters, an RO system will necessarily be a little bit more expensive because of course you have more components to it, there's more upkeep because you have more components to change out, and as you can well imagine, when you have so many components, it's necessarily going to take up more space under your sink. Also, finally, to get that water through the, the entire system, it can require more pressure as compared to a carbon block system. To talk a little bit more about carbon blocks, I'm going to hand it over now to John. Thanks, Rich. So what exactly is a carbon block? What is it made out of? So carbon blocks are made out of activated carbon. Ultimately, we ship powdered activated carbon to filter manufacturers. At their facilities, it undergoes an extrusion process where the carbon is combined with a binder and sometimes other sorbent media such as an ion exchange resin. And ultimately, you get a carbon cylinder such as this one here. Note the, the inside is, is hollow. In its application, water will pass from the outside of the carbon block to the inside, so into this hollow center, and be collected there, removing contaminants along the way. Activated carbon blocks come in all different shapes and sizes, use various medias, different types of activated carbon, as well as other sorbents, and it ultimately is very effective in removing organics, PFAS compounds, and if you add ion exchange resin, it even can remove lead as well. So from the overall summary, an activated carbon block filtration ultimately is able to achieve some high level removals, very similar to an RO filter, um, and ultimately just needs to be changed out at a frequent enough basis to maintain those removals. So I'll turn it back to Eric. Thanks, John. So as we saw from both John and Rich, the design of these under sink devices can vary depending on what technology is used. So what that means for the consumer is you need to make sure that the filter you're buying is designed to remove the contaminants that are in your water. For PFAS, that means looking for the NSF 53 or NSF P473 certification that says that device is certified to remove PFOA and PFOS. Just as important as that certification, is maintaining that filter in accordance with the manufacturer's guidelines. If you don't change out that filter regularly, it's not going to work effectively to remove those contaminants. With that, thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.